Hi everyone and welcome to a new video series by Luxion, the makers of Keyshot. My name is Richard Fennell and I'm the global training specialist responsible for our on-site training at Luxion. Uh, what we're going to focus on in this new series is the entire workflow on how it relates to Keyshot. So not just working within Keyshot, but how to actually prepare your 3D models so you can import them a little bit better when you're working in Keyshot. Uh, focus on the workflow within Keyshot, uh, depending on your scene, different tips and tricks in order to get the best uh, renderings and animations. And then also, if it's necessary, how to do uh, some of the tips and tricks for post-processing or Photoshop in order to get the best results. Uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments and we'll get back to you that way. Uh, but otherwise, we'll go ahead and start working on our first video, which is going to be rendering a tablet in a small accessory. Thanks. Okay, so the project that we're going to be working with is this tablet and the stylus here. So this was a scene that I prepared earlier, and this is going to be the kind of image that we're going to shoot for in our, uh, in our video today. Uh, so before we actually hop into Keyshot, let's take a look at the 3D models and, and see what we can do to make that workflow a little bit better. I use Siemens NX for my 3D modeling, uh, but all the things that I'll be talking about are going to be the same principles no matter what your 3D program is that you're working on. So if we take a look at our file here, it's a pretty simple tablet. Um, some of the details have been flushed out a little bit more. For example, you can see the USB ports, uh, the SD cards, things like that. Those assets were downloaded from grabcad.com. So I did a search for some of those, those little items and then made some adjustments to them so that they were a little cleaner or they worked better with my model. But instead of having to model that kind of detail, uh, you can work with existing resources. But adding those little items uh, will add realism to your, to your renderings. Okay, so this tablet has a display, right? So it's got this, this piece of glass with the display behind it. One thing to keep in mind here is how that geometry actually gets broken up. So first of all, you'll see that on top, I've got this body, which is my piece of glass, right? Uh, and I'll go ahead and hide that. And you'll see now below the piece of glass is gonna be my actual display. And then I have a, a small bezel behind there so we can just make that dark. Uh, but I'll bring that piece of glass back and let's take a look at a section here because I want to call out one important item. Uh, first of all, is that this piece of glass, there's going to be an air gap, right? So we're going to have our piece of glass and behind that, we actually have our display. So it's really important that you don't have those two surfaces as coplanar. If you've run, ever run into an issue where you've got a piece of glass and something behind it and you get these you know, dark triangles, well, that's what's going on. In this case, my display, I actually have a small air gap uh, so that those those two coplanar surfaces don't intersect. Uh, so that's just something that we want to keep in mind. Okay, so that's that's as far as the display goes. And then the rest of it, you can see I've applied a lot of different colors already uh, to the different parts or different bodies, and then those will automatically come into Keyshot as link materials. So that's the tablet portion. Let's take a look now at our stylus. So it's pretty simple and same thing here. Even if I have multiple bodies, for example, I've got kind of my barrel of the stylus and then I've got this cap. Uh, they're two separate pieces of geometry, but I've changed the colors on those two parts so that when I bring them in a key shot, uh, I'm not gonna have any problems with those, uh, with those not being linked. They'll come in as automatically linked. For example, these red parts, I know I'm going to want those to be chrome. So this little red part here and my little clip on the end. Uh, if you make those the same color in your modeling software, uh, then you won't have any issues with those being linked when we bring those into Keyshot. Okay, so that's the 3D preparation side of it. Let's also talk for just a second about some of the 2D assets that we're going to be using. For example, the graphics. So we've prepared some graphics here and those are going to go on our tablet. So let's take a look at that actual artwork file. So these are some quick screen grabs out of NX and then on top, you can see that the graphics have been applied in Photoshop. Now when we save these out, what we'll do is we'll actually save those as a PNG with transparency because that'll allow us to actually place that on the part. So the final graphics look something like this. Here's the graphics for the right hand side and then the graphics for the left hand side. So again, it's a PNG with transparency. So that's an imp that's the important part. Uh, if you save it out as a JPEG, uh, JPEG doesn't support transparency. So those are my labels. 
the other thing that we've prepared is this kind of mock-up for the screen. So if I pull up my dialog under image and we look at the actual image size, uh, these are the dimensions in meters, excuse me, millimeters of the actual display. Uh, and you can see it's 300 DPI. So that's important because we added DPI support. But that means you can mock up your physical display size and then build the screen around that. So I just saved that as a JPEG, but it's a 300 DPI JPEG that we'll use on our display. So that's the prep on the 2D side of things. Now let's go ahead and open Keyshot and bring our 3D models in. To start with, I'm gonna grab the sketch tablet part and then just bring this over. And we can keep pretty much everything at the default center geometry, snap to ground. The important one that I wanna check is this keep original. I always recommend doing that. Uh, the tessellation will keep at the default value. We're not gonna need the NURBS data and we'll make sure that accurate tessellation is checked, but we'll just click import and bring that in. Okay, so now our tablet has come in and it's going to have the same RGB colors that were originally in the scene uh, within NX. I'm also going to go ahead and add that stylus in. So I just hit the import button. I'm going to get this stylet, stylus and I'll by default it'll go to add to scene. So I'm going to add it to the scene, keep all the rest of that as default and then just hit import. So it's going to bring that stylus in on top. So I can toggle the visibility of those two models uh, just with this little checkbox here. Uh, I'm also going to hit F and go into full screen mode. And let's start by applying some materials. I'll turn off the stylus and let's just focus on the tablet for now. Okay, so first let's get a glass material. And under clear glass, I'll get a basic glass, a uh, white glass, and just drag it over and apply it to my display glass there. So now we can actually see through that material. Um, let's take a look at some of these other materials in here. One thing I'll do is I'll hit the little P here to put in performance mode. That's going to let Keyshot run a little faster by turning off the shadows. Uh, and let's zoom in. I'll right click, look at, and let's just apply some materials here on these ports. So these are all linked. So I'll just go to my plastic materials folder and get a hard rough plastic, in this case a black plastic, and just drag that over onto the part. I have all my little contacts, which I'm going to say are copper. Uh, so I'll go to the metals folder, get uh, the copper folder, and under the basic copper, get a rough copper material and drag that over. So I've applied those materials to those parts. Let's swing this around. Uh, I've got these buttons here. Let's say they would be a dark chrome. So I'll go to the basic chromes, get a black chrome, drag it over. I've applied most of the materials around the edges here. You can see those are all linked within it, uh, or they were the same color in NX, so they're all automatically linked. One thing I also do to find out if I've applied all the materials is um, I'll start hiding parts. So I'll apply a quick, let's say, anodized material to this. Uh, we'll add a little bit of a rough anodized material, this blue, for example, and apply it. Uh, but what I was talking about with hiding it, if I right-click that part and I hide it, now I can see any other parts that might be hidden that need to have a material applied. Like this part here, we'll just get a, uh, we'll get a rough aluminum. So this is what you would see through the, the speaker mesh. Okay, now I'll uncheck my stylus and bring it back. So now all the parts are visible in the scene. So let's take a second to talk about the display. All right, so my piece of glass here, uh, if you click on it in the real-time view, you'll get that orange highlight. I'm going to rename that. I'm going to call that glass so now I can quickly identify and find that here under my scene tree, but I'll uncheck it. Uh, this kind of bezel, I'll just change that. We'll keep this standard diffuse material, but instead of it being green, I'll just drop that down to a really dark gray. So that's a 2% gray. Now on my screen here, what I'm going to do is I'll double click on that to edit it. And I'm gonna use a little bit different material on this one, but I'm gonna use a flat material. In this case, because my intended result is in a bright environment, I'm not gonna make an emissive material or uh, use an illuminated display. I'll just use a flat material. We do have a quick tip for recording, or excuse me, we do have a quick tip uh, that has a recording for getting that emissive material or the illuminated display. But I'm just gonna use a flat material which doesn't catch shadows or reflections, and we'll just load in a color texture. So. Uh, this little checkbox, and then we'll go into the folder that has my assets, and here's that display. So I'm going to select that and apply it as a color texture. 
The important thing when we brought it in and kept the original units means that now when I enable this DPI checkbox and I type in um, a value for the DPI, our, and if we remember our image was 300 DPI, now if I type that in, you'll see that it's perfectly sized onto our part. So that's why we want to work with DPI and the original scale. Uh, I can see I've got these parts right here that should be on top, so my display is flipped. So I'll just hit flip vertical, and now it's in the correct orientation. So that's good to go. Um, the last thing here is I have my forward facing camera, so I'll just look at and zoom in on that, and I'll apply just some quick materials here, just a basic chrome around it, and then for my lens here, I'm gonna go into the miscellaneous folder, and there's a material called thin film, so I'll drag that over, and that's gonna give me kind of that coated lens effect, right? So got all our materials here, and then I'll go back, turn on my glass, Right, and so now you can see that I have the reflection on the glass, but below the glass, uh, I've got my display. It's not illuminated, but that flat material will just show whatever the image is with no shadows or reflections. Uh, I'm also gonna swap out the environment. I'll go to one of our standard environments, this three panels tilted. I'll drag that and apply it. And now we can see some sharper highlights in the scene. So. Uh, we've got all the materials applied to our tablet. So let's take a look at the stylus now. I'll uncheck the tablet and then check the stylus and then let's apply some materials. Uh, what we could do is we could, we could go to our material library and drag out a bunch more materials. Uh, but instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my in-scene materials here over on the right hand side. What I can do is I can apply these materials here, and when I drag them onto my scene, it now just adds that same material to these parts. So this is the same anodized material that's on my tablet, which means that they're linked. So I don't have to have a bunch of multiple materials uh, floating around in my scene. Uh, for example, let's say we wanna make these two buttons here, um, let's say a dark chrome material. That's gonna be the same dark chrome that's used on my buttons on the tablet. Uh, some of these other materials I do have to grab out of my library, so I'll just drag these over. A chrome material, and then let's get a hard, shiny white plastic for the, um, the stylus tip. And then back here we have our kind of faux eraser. Uh, I, I want to use a rubber material, so I can just type that in. So I'll just type in rubber, right? So here's one of the pre-made rubber materials from our library. So now we've added the materials to our stylus. Cool, and if you look here in our in-scene materials, uh, you'll see that we don't have any diffuse kind of standard materials. Uh, they're all now, this means that all the materials have been applied to all the parts in the scene. So if we bring back our tablet, you can see that we now have all the materials applied. Um, last thing we'll do on the tablet is we'll add in those labels, so those graphics. Um, so that, those are the assets that we prepared earlier with those transparent PNGs. So first of all, on the right-hand side of the tablet, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double-click on it, and I'll go over to my labels. And in this case, we'll load a label, and I want the graphics R, so graphics for the right-hand side. Now when I click, you can see that it's just going to position that label. Uh, I actually forgot what the DPI was for these graphics, so what I'll do is I'll actually open those in Photoshop down here. And let's see what the DPI was for these. So if I go to image and image size, uh, you can see it's 600 DPI because these, uh, these are simpler. So what we'll do is we'll enable that DPI support and then just type in a value of 600 and now it's going to be the correct scale um, What you have to do when you're positioning these labels uh, by default, it's normal projection So you have to kind of line it up close how you want it and then now I can hit my position button Here and now we can position that label so it should be Something like this because of my geometry. I'm not exactly able to get it where I need it uh, But what I can do is I can just use the shift sliders here to position it where I want it and that's gonna be close enough for this part here. Uh, so now let's swing around to the other side of the tablet and then we want the graphics for the left-hand side of the tablet. So in this case, uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll add a label, get the graphics L, L for left. And then now when I click, uh, that'll just position it at first, but I, what I wanna do is make sure I have the DPI support turned on, type in 600, 
uh, and then I'll click the position button again and now we should see these graphics this one again I've got kind of an empty space um, so it's a little tough to position so I'll get it close and then now I can just shift with my X and Y sliders and hopefully that should pop up right about where I need it so that looks pretty good and then I can tweak that on the Y just to center that a little bit better and then hit done so now I have my labels on both sides for my ports. Perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and now talk about setting up our scene. First, what I'm going to do is I want to have two tablets here in this scene. So um, I'm just going to select my tablet and this is on the model level. I can't do this to a part, but if I have a model in my scene, I could right click on it and I can use the make pattern tool. Uh, what this will do is this won't duplicate the part, this will make instances. So now if I just hit two, uh, I'll have two instances of that tablet. Um, and I want those to be close together, so I'm not gonna have a lot of spacing. I'll just set that down to zero so that I'm having an instance of the tablet on top of the other tablet and I'll get rid of the resize environment and center because that was fine how it was. Uh, then I'll hit okay. But now you can see here in my scene, I've got two tablets, tablet one and tablet two. So let's go ahead and move one of these around. Uh, this one, for example, our second one, I'll just go to the position tab, hit the move tool, and then now uh, reorient this. So you can move with the arrows, you can scale with the little cubes, and you can rotate with the circles. So I'm going to rotate this so I get it a little bit more upright. I'm gonna hold down shift so that when I rotate, it's snapping to 15 degree increments. And we'll leave that at a little bit of an angle. And then I'll hit snap to ground. And then hit my little green checkbox. That looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and select this tablet, go back to my position tool, and then let's, uh, let's move that. Uh, and you can see it's actually retaining the original or the local axis, but what I can do is I can just toggle over to the global axis. And now this is gonna be working off of my global or the key shot axis as opposed to just that part. But now I'll bring this over and we'll also rotate this a little bit just because. Hold down shift, add a little bit of a tilt onto that one, and let's move it over here. Okay, so now we've got our tablets set up in the scene. Now let's get our stylus. So our stylus is back here. This one, we can't have it snap to the ground. Uh, we have to move it manually, but I'll just select the stylus, go to the position tab, use the move tool. And first of all, let's move it up. And this will kind of have to eyeball, um, but I'll grab the arrow here and let's move that on top of the actual surface. And I'll get my camera angle down low so we can see that a little bit better. Now I'll hold down shift and then just rotate that. And then let's move it a little bit off center and then hit the green checkbox. All right, so here's our scene. Perfect. So now what we'll do is we'll rotate this to the angle we want. Let's say something like this. And um, I'll go to my environment tab. I already changed out the environment. Again, that was the three panels tilted. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate that so I get a nice screen reflection on these. All right, so something like that looks okay. To get it on the white background, I'll just hit color. And now if I get it out of performance mode, we can see it with the shadows. So let's compose our scene something like this. A couple small tweaks that I'll do is on this tablet here, I don't want to have the same screen, it's duplicated. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll select that screen and uh, for all intents and purposes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it off. So I'm gonna uncheck the glass I'll double click on this screen and what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the color texture and we'll go back to the actual color of that material and we'll just set it to black. So we've effectively turned off our screen. Now we'll just turn the glass back on. Uh, and this is a little bit of an extra step that I'm about to do. You don't necessarily have to do it, uh, but I don't like the double reflections on this glass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on that piece of glass, change that to two sided which is gonna give me more of an impression of a solid piece of glass or thicker glass. Now I get a simpler reflection, then get my camera angle lined up how I want it. And then uh, let's take a minute, let's let it sit here and bake. I might just bump up the shadow quality on that to two. 
so my shadows are a little bit cleaner uh, but otherwise um, our scene looks pretty good if you have any questions feel free to post them down in the comment section we'll be replying to them and also keep uh, keep an eye out for future videos subscribe to us on youtube and you can always get more videos and more tutorials at keyshot.com learning.